Oh, well, hello. I didn't expect to see you here. Uh, today I'm putting in a raised flower bed. I just finished, well, I haven't finished it completely, this uh, compost. Uh, putting in this raised flower bed. And you think, what does that have to do with the patio? Um, it doesn't have a ton to do with the patio, uh, other than I'm moving a lot of dirt and I need a place to put the dirt. And also the patio is part and parcel of a greater project, the, uh, the Garden of Eden, which I'm trying to build for myself. I got little paths and flowers and lovely things. I want to go around in the morning and drink my coffee and smoke my little cigarettes and again have my little Garden of Eden. Before Eve showed up, Adam just walking around naked, just jacking it all day. No, I think it's, I always thought that story was actually like a metaphor for pre-puberty, before being interested in chicks. Like when Adam just like collecting Ninja Turtle toys and playing baseball and his mind was clear before he turned into a foaming at the mouth, raging sex beast. I think it's gonna be a lovely oasis. Got some junky stuff, put it right in there, nice. When I say oasis, I mean like away, sis. Like away from it, sis. Get all, fuck you guys. One thing I didn't show you yesterday is this little, uh... hey. Cat just took a shit on my rocks. Anyway, right next to where my cat was taking a dump, uh, this I built this little weird deck and a lot of me and my kids are like, what the hell is that for? Um, this is the only place in my yard. If I'm right here, literally no windows can see me anywhere. This gets the most shade in the morning. Put my little chair here, drink my coffee in the morning, stare at my phone like an idiot. But if I wanted to get bare ass naked and just... Nobody would see me. Right here, my secret spot. Anyway, so I got the retaining wall I built to the left side of the door and I want to match that going down through here. Um, I am just going to pull a string, but I got to move a whole ton of dirt. Last time I didn't move enough dirt and it was a bit of a pain when I did this bit over here. Um, so I'm going to actually remove quite a bit and I got to put it somewhere. A lot of it is going to go back in place because I'm going to have to level that out. And I gotta fill that void up there. Again, we'll do proper layout another day, but today I know I need to bring a whole bunch out. And if you see, for some odd reason, they have a, a pad Lowe's. Do it right. Great buckets. Um, they have a pad that goes uh, all the way to the uh, corner of that block wall on this side, but not on this side over here. I want that to match. So I'm gonna dig that out and make a full concrete pad and start my wall coming out of the block wall to mirror the wall that I've already built. So really, uh, I just have to move a lot of dirt. Without question, there must have been a brick building here before because I can't dig a single hole in this yard I'm saying anywhere in this yard and not find mountains of brick which is interesting to me because my house is not brick now I am just showing off um, these are a couple really cool things I found this if you watch the video the shaker cabinet video this is what it looks like done uh, I don't have a vacuum bag on my vacuum. Typically it works amazing. Right now it's just covered in dust. But I did want to show you these cool things. I don't know how well you can see this bottle, but it's got a little mermaid on it. Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis Brewing Company. I don't know why they have mermaids in Indiana. Landlocked. And then a lot of cool old bottles like this. So whoever did the masonry uh, liked the drink. All right, folks, uh, I'm gonna do the layout phase. Uh, I talk a lot of shit on these videos. Uh, like I said on the last one, the purpose of these is for me to uh, try to empower people to be able to do things themselves. And this is sort of the daunting part because uh, the pre-planning is very important. Otherwise, you give yourself a lot of extra work or you make mistakes which cost a lot of money. Um, so, yeah. I tried to, there's a, um, 
art and science to all this business, I guess. And I'm going to try to explain it. I know everybody's brain kind of works differently than others, so I'm trying to explain it in as many ways possible. So maybe you find an avenue of my explanation that'll help you. Also, uh, I hate YouTube videos with like a long preamble before they just get to it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, anyway, so uh, it's like anything, let's say like baking a cake or a dress or sewing dresses, you need to like build it completely in your brain and then take it apart backwards so you know what pieces you need, what steps you got to take in order to get to your finished product. Um, but oftentimes in a project like this, um, you're kind of making up you're not 100% like, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know 100% where my finished product's gonna be. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do the stairs yet. I'm not sure where I want it to end, depths and all that wise. Um, but the things I do know is I want it to be, the walls to be symmetrical. This wall to be symmetrical with the other wall. Uh, my house is symmetrical going back on the outside. That's a feature of a lot of craftsman homes is it's, not all symmetrical houses are craftsmen, but most craftsmen are symmetrical. Like a Georgian's often symmetrical, whatever. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to lay out the things that I know I need now uh, to get ready to do that. And I'll show you like cheap and easy ways to kind of do some layout. Alright, uh, you can get a lot of fancy lasers and whatever kind of layout with that, um, but I do a lot of it with just a string and then this little bubble level and you can do it with that. Alright, at this stage it's not imperative, but I want my line to be flush going down the wall. I mean, it's not imperative that it's perfect, but you want it pretty close. Alright, so with my line level, pull this taut. I got the height and the level with the other wall. So the other wall would actually be, because I got that block on top of it, seven and a half down, which is way low. And you're like, who cares? Um, because this two by four here is actually level with where I want the finished height of the deck. You go over here. Right here is the walkway coming in. So this will be finished level. And that goes along with this here. There. So basically what I'm saying is this block wall is going to be considerably higher than the other one. The other one is actually about right there. If I was going straight level across. It's hard to follow, but it'll make sense when we get to that point. Alright, and another thing you want to consider when you're doing a patio, uh, deck, uh, driveway, anything, you want you don't want it dead level, especially at a house. You want it the more you can get the water to run away from the house, so you want a little bit of fall to it as they call it, just unlevel away from the house. So if I'm pulling this across and it hits right there as level with the other wall, and it's 27 inches down from the top of the wall to the footer over there. That essentially means I need to come down here from this point 27 inches, which would be, it's already about 13 down. So right on here, 
plus 27. So that way I know from this point here down, from down 27, and then I level across, that's the height of the footer. So then just whatever the subtract for what the footer height's gonna be. I think it seems more confusing than it is. Now that I got my line, at least there I can go ahead and lay out where I need to dig. So I'm all ready to start digging dirt. This is essentially the finished height, and I gotta go way down. I have to have a retaining wall here against the fence. And I'm gonna do that out of pressure treated. Not ideal, but uh, pressure treated as a retaining wall. Uh, they said you get maybe anywhere from 30 to 40 years out of it. So by that eight time, I'll be 65 anyway, so who cares? Okay, that uh, 2x4 horizontally is going to re represent the finished height of my deck. And I added a couple 4x4 posts in the ground. They're 30 inches into the ground. Throw some concrete in there, and then I can use those to build what will be a wood retaining wall. Alright, I put that at a just the slightest incline again so the water could run down, and I transferred where the face of the block will be. So that way I have enough to return the block to that 4x4. Four four. Most of that sounds like utter nonsense at the moment, but you'll see later why. Typically you're gonna to wanna to wear a mask for this, but I just go ahead and hold my breath. Uh, I used to get the concrete uh, wet and mix it, then dump it down the hole, but really, it's gonna set up in there. I don't know how much difference it's going to make, but I'm going to go ahead and put some tar paper on the wood. Uh, maybe it'll make the wood last a little bit longer. Maybe it'll do nothing, just make me feel better. But either way, there. I made the conscious choice to run it long so then I can go back and cut it off later when uh, I do the pavers. And that'll also keep a little bit of dirt and whatever from falling down inside the wall. Alright, so I took my string line and my level and marked over from the top of where the patio is going to be to this wall here. Um, I'm making it again slightly out of level because I want the water to run away from the house. One positive thing about this retaining wall is it gives me a place to fling dirt that's a lot closer and I'll have to build as many uh, raised flower beds to store my earth. But uh, an important note, if you're ever going to dig anything in your yard, you want to contact your local utilities. Uh, there's usually every state has a free service where they come out and mark where all your utilities are. That way you don't accidentally blast into a power line or water line or something silly like that. That'll really slow your project down and just make you look like an idiot. So uh, make sure you do that. Uh, I know for the most part this video has been pretty convoluted and all over the shop, but it all makes sense in the end. Essentially, really what I gotta figure out is this is the wall I've done already. And this pad that I'm sitting on is uh, really gonna determine the height of the first course. Um, so I have to take that finish height, subtract one of these dudes, the width of the closing block, and then all the block down, and that's where I'll know my footer, but I at least want a, a good six inches of footer, because that's a lot of earth to hurt, hurt that hole, a little, sorry, I've been digging lots of holes, I can't even speak. Uh, yeah, so I want a good six inch footer, the block on that, because that is a lot of uh, dirt and weight to hold against that wall. And especially because it's just, it's going to be tied into this wall, going that way and cutting back just a little bit. That's not a whole lot holding in place. Again, uh, If you've watched these videos a while, you know how nonsensical they are. Um, this is a series. You don't watch The Sopranos in the first episode. They explain to you how it's gonna end. Terribly, by the way. Am I fly been down this whole video? Um, yeah, it'll all come together. Anyway, uh, also hopefully some of the videos get more exciting than this. Anyway, get away, get out of here, fuck off.